are here tonight to uh, dedicate the 10th Avenue Grand to a really great man who uh, a lot of us older people know, Howard Rowland. And uh, the sign is up on the Howard Rowland Pavilion. The weather didn't hold up for us tonight, so we're down here at the Taylor Pavilion. But most of you people know where our 10th Avenue Public Safety Building is, and um, it, it's really fitting for uh, to name it the Howard Rowland the public safety pavilion because he was all about public safety. Uh, he spent a lot of years on our beach. I know a lot of the older guys can do it. And it's funny that uh, Harry and I discussed this probably last year when we were going to name the building. And because of COVID and the pandemic, and you know we couldn't get together to get it up and, and do it justice. So the masks are off, so we're able to all gather tonight to present. But I'll tell you what, over the year, uh, talking to everybody that we're, we were going to do that, the stories that uh, came out of everybody about Howard Rowland, I mean, between him teaching all the kids down at Dale Street Beach how to swim, his 8,000 rescues, I mean, the stories go on and on, and all, all the guys that he trained, I mean, it is so appropriate for us to name that guy after him and keep his legacy going. So, but uh, each one of us have a story. Uh, Harry's going to come up here and give a good description of everything. So, he told me not to steal his thunder, so <laughs> I'm going to do that. But there's a couple things that uh, when I was a kid, I remember when we were in the water, there was two people I was always afraid of. One was Harry Rowland, because if he'd come down that beach, he didn't need a whistle. He would just fold his arms and look at you. You knew you better get out of the water. The other one was my mother when she was on the beach <laughs> with a three foot wooden spoon. And it was either late, late for school. And uh, a lot of these guys that go through lifeguard boot camp training, you should go with my mother because you had to swim in and run like hell so she wouldn't be able to beat <laughs> I can get down and tell that story now. I always used to tell my mom. Yeah, when I became a cop, I could lock you up for that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was funny. But knowing all, all the different stories about Howard, it is so appropriate that we uh, name that pavilion after him. Uh, just a couple of people I'd like to recognize here tonight. We have our council of people. We have uh, Tom Brennan is here from council, and uh, Tom Carvelli is here from the council. I haven't seen Pat Watch in here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have the Mayor of Madison Brown, Andy Donovan. Thank you for coming up. <laughs> but uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to uh, invite up uh, Rebecca before we start. Um, she has some of uh, Howard's, Roland's family members here. So, Rebecca, you can come up and introduce them all to us. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, just want to say thank you, everyone. Hello, my name is Rebecca Spedaleri. I uh, have a role to me. He's my great, great uncle. Um, I have vague memories of him uh, growing up as a child. Uh, I grew up in his house. Uh, my mother was uh, his great niece. Uh, my grandmother uh, was his niece, but he was more like a, a grandfather to my mom. He gave her away to my father, who's here today, um, at their wedding, because she didn't have a father growing up. But um, he left a lot of stuff behind for me, so this is just uh, an, a great honor. Um, my grandmother is 90 years old. His niece, she is still alive. Uh, she was going to come today, but she can't see and hear very well, and the weather just was uh, holding her back. She was very sad, but she just wanted to send her best wishes and say thank you. And um, also my cousin, my second cousin, Gina, is here, my mother's cousin. Um, her father uh, is the nephew of, uh, yeah, there they are right there, <laughs> of um, my great uncle, uh, great great uncle. But um, I did bring some books, please uh, feel free to look at them. He saved, uh, my Aunt Minnie, they saved everything, um, of all the rescues, all the saves of their family, so we put on the table over there for you guys. Um, and uh, it's just an honor to be here. I have his picture uh, in my, it, believe it or not, he's my hero. I've always read about him, and so this just means the world to me. So thank you so much for doing this. All right, now we're going to bring out our chief lifeguard, Harry Weiss. Harry? Great turnout that we had here tonight because I know the weather was uh, a little 
skeptical of what we're going to do, and uh, this really worked out well. And I really appreciate everyone coming out here it's, uh, in the rain, but we really have a nice view here in the ocean, so thank you for that. Uh, as the current chief lifeguard, I consider myself to be one of the fortunate ones to have been trained by Howard Rowland. There's only three of us left that are actively working the beach. I'm still guarding in Belmar, and that's uh, myself, that's Jim Cosgrove, and Doug Stern. Can you guys wave, please? Back there. So, I see many other Belmar lifeguards here, and I'd just like to show. Uh, raise your hands, please, just so I can see uh, um, any former Belmar lifeguards. Here. Uh, I do see John Tilton back there. John Tilton was a Belmar lifeguard, and John uh, put a tremendous scrapbook together. Um, and Cliffy. And Cliffy. Cliffy Harris as well. I'm sorry, Cliff. And uh, in a few moments, I'd like you to present, you know, copy that to, to the family. Absolutely. The so uh, sure. thank you for your efforts with that. You know, when I speak about Howard Rowland, I do what any Bruins scholar would do, I, I Google them. And it's, uh, it's a very difficult task to speak about a man with so many accomplishments in, in a short time. So I could go on for days and days. Uh, it all started at age 12 when Howard rescued a baby that had fallen into Sunset Lake. And that's when he knew he wanted to become a first responder. In 1928, he got his first lifeguard job in Deal, and he was instrumental in creating water safety pr programs up and down the shore for the Red Cross and for lifeguards and the general public throughout the county. He taught countless people how to swim at the YMCA, the Asbury Natatorium, I looked up to see what that was, uh, the Empress Hotel, and the good old L Street Beach here in Belmar. Howard was a paid fireman and first aid captain in Asbury Park for 39 years. He retired at age 64, and never missing more than two days at the beach at any, any specific time. He began his career as Chief Lifeguard in Belmar in 1932, and he also served as Captain of the Asbury Park and the Avalon Lifeguards. There are many, many, many stories to be told about the thousands of rescues that Howard has made in his lifetime, but one of the most notable achievements was on September 8, 1934, when the SS Morrow Castle, a 480-foot ocean liner, caught fire and ran aground off Asbury Park. Howard was instrumental in saving many, many lives that day by swimming out and in numerous times, bringing many victims to shore. 135 passengers and crew were lost that day, and a total of 549. It was phenomenal. As a young Belmar guard, I can tell you, if you happen to see the red sheet pull up on your beach and see Howard walk down towards the stand, the hairs to the back of your neck would stand up. You didn't know if he was going to sit on the stand with you and tell you some of his great stories, quiz you on where the rip currents were, or ask you go out for a row with him in the boat or perform the dread oil rescue. We asked the stories you heard about Howard oiling up his body with some pan oil and swimming out to the last bow, starting to wave his arms are true. While reading many articles about Howard, I came across one that had some accurate quotes from another famous Belmar lifeguard, Tim O'Donnell. Tim said, to be a Belmar lifeguard, you had to rescue him. He was big and strong with his big pile of chest, he would start thrashing and kicking and dragging you down. By the time he was done, he would end up rescuing you. <laughs> How true that was, right there? Yeah. Every yeah. Belmont yeah. Lord always felt a sense of accomplishment after wrestling with Howard and finally getting him to shore. It was quite a task. Howard was a great teacher, a role model, and inspiration for as many teams of lifeguards. He was a modest, gentle man, and a grizzly bear all wrapped in one. Anyone who worked for him had the utmost respect. My favorite day for lifeguards during the summer was his birthday, which was August 23rd. The guards would meet early before work to celebrate and give Howard a cake. I think most of the guards hoped for rain that day so they could continue the celebration, but Howard would always yell to us, Get back to your beach! <laughs> always. Get back to your beach. <laughs> Howard worked in Belmar's chief lifeguard for well over 50 years until he suffered a stroke in 1985, and he passed away February 22nd, 1988. I'd like to thank his niece, uh, Rebecca, for sharing her stories and some of the information with me, that very helpful, thank you. And I'm also truly thankful to the mayor, council, administrator for their support in allowing us to continue the legacy of Howard Rowland and by rededicating this building in his name after it was destroyed by Hurricane Sandy. Uh, before I turn the podium back over to Mayor Walsford, I would like to invite former Belmar Guard and New Jersey Hall of Fame member Cecil Lear to say a few words. Fond memories you got there. Very, very quickly, I just want to 
say a few words about Howard for all of us. And uh, I've known him since probably I was about 13 years old down here on the beach. That would be about 1942. And, uh, <clears throat> and he was always our father, our uncle, our mentor. He was a wonder, wonderful person. <clears throat> Well, what I, what I would like to say is that we all here in this room have a special place for Howard in our hearts. And we, we have great stories to tell. I'm not going to tell any stories. <laughs> Harry did a great job. Mark did a great job. And I know tonight a lot of you are going to be talking about it. A lot of stories told Mark. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of wonderful <laughs> stories. <clears throat> he, was, um, he was a selfless person. He, he always worked to help other people. He never, he never thought of himself. He, he taught us how to rescue people. He taught us all kinds of theories and, and, and work with the ocean that they're being used today, even today. And he, he taught us to love the ocean, respect the ocean, never turn your back on it. <clears throat> We had wonderful times with, with the boats. He was a great boat, wonderful boat. And I hope we, I, I know the Belmar crew, and mostly beaches around here, use the boat. But it, it, it is a great art to have in your, in your pocket to be able to row a boat in the, in the sea and learn how to do that. It's a wonderful thing. <clears throat> um, we learned lifelong lessons. <clears throat> we got, he, he actually taught, taught us more about life than we knew. <clears throat> we, we always had a, 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 a wonderful person to follow as a mentor, and he always had our back, even when we were <clears throat> sent to the river beach. <laughs> because we hadn't done something he has to do. He's a tough taskmaster, but he was really a wonderful person. Thank you for having me up here. <laughs> John Phillips, would you like to come up and present that scrap book to Rebecca? Come on. The, the, uh, the family, we will just bring it over to you and you present to her. I thought it was a pizza. No. <laughs> All right, so this Memorial Day weekend, I'll be helping Clippy clean up once again. And I was helping him clean up, and I found this box full of pictures, and I go, this is good stuff. We got to share this. I went to Air Printing in Madison, and let me scan out a large bed scanner. And it's just everything, and birthday parties, cakes, at Sidoroff's. Etc. It's not for my eyes only. It's not for any. It's for sharing and being a lifeguard. is like sharing and caring. So. PG thirteen. Yes, they are. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Okay, now the mayor will come make a, a presentation and, and I'm really good fortune by local artist Suzanne Annan. Uh, I did get a chance to a sneak peek and uh, the attention to detail is unbelievable. Here you go, mayor. Um, we're, we're just going to go off of how we roll for a minute. Um, we have a lifeguard here that spent 60 years on the beach. He's retiring this year and I want to bring him up and present him with something from Belmar. Timmy?
as a lifeguard, achieving the ranks of lieutenant, captain, and treasurer of school on, on the Belmore Beach Patrol. 1961 to 2020. Congratulations on your retirement. We're on a living on a mission. So we do appreciate it. Um, it's such a big deal. of community individuals who support first responders. We've been in existence uh, since the 1970s, and uh, we support police officers, firefighters, EMT personnel. What we do is, we, in a time of tragedy, when someone is uh, injured or killed in the line of duty, we're there the next day to support the family with financial assistance. We also provide scholarships to children of first responders uh, every year, about $100,000 worth of scholarships. And uh, one of the other things we do is we recognize uh, heroic efforts of first responders that sometimes do not get noticed. And we do that in a annual luncheon, a Valor Awards luncheon in Spring Lake. Uh, but this year, because of the fact that we're having this dedication, and particularly in line that it's dedicated to naming a pavilion after Howard Rowland. I listened to his niece who said that he inspired individuals and that he was her hero. Well, that's why the members of the 200 Club are here today. Because on July 18th, uh, 2020, an eight-year-old little boy was digging a hole with his father on the beach dug a hole that was uh, probably bigger than it should have been. It was an eight-foot hole. And he was eight years old, so he was probably only about four feet tall. And as everyone knows who's been on the beach, particularly even lifeguards, is that when you dig a hole, sometimes that hole collapse, collapses. And that's what it did. And four lifeguards that we'd like to recognize today received this frantic call of a child being buried on the beach and they responded. And those four lifeguards, those four first responders, were individuals that combined law enforcement, emergency management personnel, and life-saving techniques in an effort to save this young boy. So we'd like to recognize as a 200 Club at this dedication ceremony, of probably the most remembered lifeguard in the history of Belmont. The actions of these four individuals in this very fine community of Belmore. So we'd like to bring up, uh, well, I want to bring up the chief first. Chief, why don't you come up with your officers as well? Chief Tina Scott from Belmore. We'd like to bring up the Nicole Hawkins. Law Enforcement Officer Tom White. <laughs> also, uh, he, he was doing double duty since he works as full time as a Wall Township police officer, but as his uh, secondary job, he's a Belmar lifeguard. Uh, officer Steve Swenson from Wall Township. <laughs> good detective on occasion. I've worked a couple of cases with the Wall Township. And I'd like to bring up uh, someone who I've known for uh, at least almost 25 years, maybe 30 years, Chief Head Lifeguard Harry Harson. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little story about Harry and I. I 
I was a prosecutor for 25 years in, in the prosecutor's office, and one of my first big cases was a murder in the uh, Breakers Hotel in uh, Spring Lake. And uh, as we were investigating, trying to find out who the uh, individual was who committed the homicide, we were interviewing witnesses, and uh, Harry was one of the people who was transporting one of the witnesses from Belmore to the Spring Lake Police Department. And during his drive down the boardwalk, Ocean Avenue, the person who was a witness turned and looked at him and said, there he is. There is the guy who shot him. And without hesitation, Harry stopped the car, went up on the boardwalk, and disarmed this murderer who still had the murder weapon in his possession, all by himself. Well, and Harry, I got to say that. Mark was with me. Oh, was Mark was with me. He had two copies walking Main Street, and I said, you come with me. And that's there you go. <laughs> and so even back in the day, um, Harry was involved with heroic efforts. But for us here today, we'd like to recognize these four individuals. We're going to give them merit awards from the 200 Club. We're, we're recognizing them here today, but we're also going to recognize them uh, two weeks from now at our awards luncheon. And I'd like to also recognize some of the members of the 200 Club who are with me here today. They are Mayor Eddie Donovan, who is the mayor of Manasquan, as you know. Uh, Claire French, who used to be the county clerk, former mayor of Wall Township. And people who, uh, one person who may, may, may know and love, at least I think, <laughs> Ed Kirshner. <laughs> Whereas the 200 Club of Monmouth County is an organization dedicated to the support of police officers, fire department personnel, first aid squad members, and furtherance of law and public safety in Monmouth County. And where we recognize annually members of police departments, the FBI, state police, first aid squad, who perform duties in such a professional manner to bring honor on themselves and their department. Whereas on the 18th day of July 2020, Patrolman Steve Swenson, Patrolwoman Nicole Hawkins, Special Law Enforcement Officer Tom White, and Chief Lifeguard Harry Harson, in the performance of their duties, have demonstrated dedication to the highest principles of professionalism in the service and protecting of their community and the citizens of Monmouth County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the 200 Club of Monmouth County recognizes these individuals for their service to their departments, their fellow officers, and particularly the citizens of Belmar and Monmouth County. And I'd like Claire French to present each one of them with her certificate of merit from the 200 Club, and each and every one of you to congratulate them on this recognition. Suzanne? 
getting us all set up with the chairs and microphone and uh, where is no, George. Oh, George. Uh, thanks, George. You're the best. We can always count on you. But uh, and thank you all for coming out. I mean, Howard was a great man. Everybody has stories. The younger guys just love some of the stories. But uh, he he was really something. All of us that got to know him, he was he was some some guy. So thank you all for coming. And if you join us at the show,